Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Ross Miriam. And you're watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. Alright, so this week on the Versus series, we've already played one match of Standard. We had a really good talk about Standard at the end of that, so if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it, especially if you're curious on where you think the Standard format is going to go. Do you think Chain Wheeler is going to get banned? Do you think uh, some new decks are going to crop up? Or do you think Mono Black, is, or sorry, Mono Red or Black Red are just going to dominate the format? Probably the latter. <laughs> uh, after that, uh, we played a bit of Modern, in yeah. which you got to do some really cool things with Mono Green Devotion. So check that one out if you hadn't. And then yesterday, we played a bit of Popper. Where you got to do some cool things I did. with Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Grey Merchant of Asphodel. So check those out if you haven't already. Today, we are going to be getting into Brawl. Now, this is a new format created by Wizards of the Coast uh, to promote some of the, let's say overshadowed cards in standard uh, is basically a commander it's a 60 card deck instead of 100 uh, you can use planeswalkers as your commanders and it's singleton uh, you start at 20 life like a normal uh, game of magic but i don't know if that's going to stay like that yeah uh we'll see how aggressive the format gets now that they've gone down from 30 to 20 maybe they readjust back up all the way to 30 maybe they only go to something like 25 but uh we saw in their previous Brawl videos, games go really long when you started at 30 life. Aggressive decks are really tough to build, even in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and I think Wizards wants this form to be a little bit faster because they do play it on Magic Online in a singleton setting, uh, whereas Commander is almost always just multiplayer. Sure. So um, this will be my first exposure, and I think yours as well, to Brawl under these new rules and with the Brawl band. Uh, I believe it's my second. Your second, okay. Yeah. But, you know, the, there's still a lot uh, to figure out in this Brawl format. You know, there are so many cards that we can try out that haven't really gotten to see much limited play, let alone constructed play. Uh, there are so many options at your disposal, and I think the deck I'm playing today might showcase a few of those. Uh, today I'm going to be playing a mono blue deck based around the Planeswalker Jace Cunning Castaway. Uh, now that Brawl is gone, I think blue decks can open up a little bit and flourish. You still want to play a lot of those uh, tempo-based like counter spells, you know, like Supreme Will is very good. I think Seek of Fate's okay. Uh, Essence Scattered Negate, you know, whatever. But uh, with with Jace Cutting Castaway, you actually have the ability to to slant your deck towards an aggressive build, which I really like, and I hope that it really shines today. Yeah, I'm a, always been a fan of uh, blue aggressive decks. They tend to have a lot of options, and they're just super fun to play because the sequencing is very intricate because mm -hmm. you need to know like, when is the turn that maybe I need to tap out and get aggressive here, or uh, like what counter spells do I need to hold up on which turns based on how I think my opponent's going to sequence. A lot of cool decisions there. I am also playing a monocolor deck, but I've chosen black. Uh, I played a mono black deck in the very first Brawl video we did. That was before Dominaria was even released. I played a Yeheni deck, and that was super fun. And oh, yeah. No, Yeheni seemed really cool. I believe I was playing against you, and uh, I think there was a turn where you got to go Yeheni's Expertise plus Yeheni, and, and, uh, or maybe not. Maybe I, don't, yeah. I think I was playing against Todd Stevens. I remember playing against Yeheni at some point in re recently-ish. And it was very good against me, so I don't, I don't you know, yeah. it just got really big and all my creatures died, and then I died. Well, Gonti is also great, and particularly good against Counterspell decks. No, Gonti is awesome. Uh, I think it's a, a really smart choice for a uh, commander, uh, especially because it's not that expensive. You know, as your opponents are able to deal with your commander, it's starting to cost two more each time. Uh, means there should be a higher emphasis on uh, commanders that are cheaper. Yes. And when you start at only 20 life as opposed to 30, the time you have to recast it dwindles uh, over time. And Gaunti is one of those cards that can play catch up very well because it's a two for one. Uh, it's a two three with death touch, so it survives a decent amount of removal, uh, can block a decent amount of cheap creatures, as well as get a free spell off the top of your opponent's deck. Yeah. Gaunti is just a, one of those, one of the best designed cards, I would say, in Kaladesh. Yeah, well, there's a lot of badly designed cards in Kaladesh. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know how much that says. Actually, I believe that's Aether Reborn. But, Aether, yeah. oh, sure. Same. Well, Kaladesh block. Yeah, sure. That's what I meant. All right, well, let's go ahead and get to the match between Mono Blue Jace and Mono Black Gaunti. 
Hey, we are here for game one, and I am on the play after losing in Pauper yesterday, and my hand has Elvish Visionary, and that means by law I have to keep. <laughs> the king has decreed. Uh, my side, we have a few what would be stinkers in our hand, but in Brawl and in this particular deck, I kind of like them. Okay. All right. Swamp go. All right. Uh, Slither Blade. We ooh, getting the grass. baby. All right. Your turn. So their blade okay. is a card that saw a, a decent amount of limited play after people figured out that having a bunch of them was pretty good in that limited format. Just an aggressive, unblockable creature. Okay, I'm going to play Elvish Visionary, so GG. Let's go yeah. to game two. I'm a 19. No thanks. I, I would like to continue playing Magic. You, you can go. All right, I'm going to whack you down to 18 since I can't be blocked. Can't be stopped. <laughs> um... I think we want to get a little more pressure on the battlefield. Uh, I'm going to say go. So basically now if Ross ever taps out, I basically get to Jay's tick up. And it's going to be pretty hard for him to kill it. And I'm going to start looting a bunch. Uh, that is if he taps out for a creature. If he holds up for removal spells, we we will probably change how we play this game. You so, get a 19. Yep. Yeah, I'm I not going to block. I'm going to duress you. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. You want this dousing dagger that was going to turn into a black lotus or lotus veil. Excuse me. Or one of my three counter spells. Uh, I will take the dousing dagger. Tilt. That's what I really didn't want to have. To. And I will pass the turn. <laughs> All right. There's a good chance one of my creatures dies this turn. Hmm. I could just play a counter spell and protect my creatures. Man, that's a tilt. There was. A, I really wanted to play this on turn two and just basically force Ross to like kill every creature I played uh, because most of them are unblockable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think we're still doing okay. I think if I play Jason, tick up on both of these and attack, this will probably survive next turn. Uh, and I'll also get one loot. So I think I want to do that. Holding on to a counter spell, I'm basically just forced to uh, counter whatever removal spell he plays this turn, if he even has one. So uh, target these. Yeah. Well, it's, or, it's whenever yeah. one or more. You still only get one okay. loot. Attack. Uh, I will take two, go to 16. All right. I'll loot. That's a big old boy. Holy crap. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to discard Zahid. I have a reasonable amount of uh, artifacts, but I don't have a good one for him just yet. So I think I'm just going to discard it. And see. I really wish uh, Cunning Castaway was designed in such a way where every creature you got <laughs> or you hit with got to loot. Uh, that's not, not what I wanted. Uh, so let's attack Jace. Okay. Three. And definitely casting this Yeheni's expertise. No! What? Uh, and that's I guess I... Cabbage. I don't think there's really going to be another spot for me to cast this, but I guess I just have to hope Todd drew another creature, so I will divest you. Divest you. I did draw a Trexus. Excellent. So let's take that away. And Honestly, I don't even know what that card does. Is it literally just mm -hmm. one black take a creature out there? Choose an artifact or creature. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. That's one that doesn't see a whole so lot of play. Cancel, yeah, cancel this lot rebuff. So now what I can do, I can actually just play a uh, a Jace Castaway game and hold up counter spells. Getting on tap with Jace here is pretty sweet. I can yeah. also play the game where I just tick up twice, try to protect it, and... Um, and try to uh, double it. So I think I might actually just do that. Go. Okay. I will cast Gonti. I will use this rebuff while I can. So, so next turn it will cost six. Yeah. You can go. All right. Go. Need something good here. And I don't think that really counts. Um, play Gonti. All right. I will cancel it. You can go. So here I actually have a pretty interesting decision. I can uh, just tick up Jace one more time, and then uh, next turn I can make two, so effectively give me three. But I think... It's just, it's a tempo-esque play to ultimate, get an extra copy, 
So even though this is technically going to go to my graveyard, but I'm going to leave him in play for, you know, plus well, it's going to go to your command zone so you can recast it. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. So. Oh, that's so tight. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, Jace okay. tokens. Well, here's some Todd Andersons. Okay. That's, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, they both come in at three. Uh, some more dice. We'll leave the Jace here so we kind of know that those are Jaces. But when these are be in the command zone when they're oriented 90 degrees the other way. All right, now what? We can just make two creatures and start putting some pressure onto Ross. But I kind of just want to threaten more Jaces. <laughs> so we'll just take them both up. Your turn. Pretty soon I'm going to have four Jaces. And then eight Jaces. And then 16 Jaces. Who cares? <laughs> Unburden you. Um, I think I'm going to let this one resolve. Uh, I have two kind of mediocre cards in my hand. Um... Skyship Plunder is pretty good at like putting more counters on Jace, but I'm basically just holding up for counter spells forever. So we're just going to discard that and a chart, of course. We are all in on Jace Rooney. You can go. Took a boop. <laughs> go. Oh, we're going to need some more Todd Anderson tokens. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Eventually, I'm going to start attacking you. Eventually. Never. Nah. Okay. Uh, Return. Yeah. Targeting. Some creature Traxos. in your graveyard. Get Traxos. Sure. Okay. I get a zombie. All right. Zombie is okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to make four Jaces. Yeah. I'm probably going to make some number of illusions this turn just to protect Jace. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, maybe I should just turn these upside down. But All right, so they all have three. Let's figure out how exactly we want to sequence these. I think we want to like keep ticking two up and then tick two down. So let's do that. All right, so two of them at four, two of them are at uh, one... I believe you. Yeah, one. And then I have two illusions. Your turn. One card in hand? Yes. That one's kind of cool. <laughs> it's Jace flooded. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Maybe I should. Actually, I'm going to make one more illusion just in case you have two removal spells. I'm just going to have three blockers. Uh, let's kill one of them. He did. And is your last card another counter spell? Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have just cast Jace. <laughs> sure. No attacks. Um. Uh, you don't have to. I was just curious. Yeah, I think I should probably. F no. I think attack is actually bad. Yeah, probably. you can go. All right. Well, that's pretty good. Silent Storm Tamer is a good way to protect my Planeswalkers. All right, so all the ones that are at one will take up to two. And then I kind of want to take this one down, but just to have another blocker. But maybe maybe I just need to threaten to ultimate this one again. Uh, and I want to play this over casting this just because I want to make sure that the worst doesn't happen. Uh, we'll see go. Wow. That wasn't good. Oh. Uh, three, seven, eight, so... Bane Whip Punisher. Yeah, I don't know what this one does. It's gonna kill Siren Storm Tamer. No! That's pretty good. I block. Yeah, attack a Jace. You can go. Maybe I needed to wait. Like, if I'd waited on Liliana, I would have resolved it. And I might be able to get back in this game. But right now, I'm just... There's so many Jaces. Yeah. All right. We're going to ultimate this one. It's going to create two more Jaces. They both have three. How do you deal with five Blainswalkers? 
<laughs> I mean, they're not really even doing anything except making more planeswalkers. But uh, all right, we're gonna tick up all three of these. Just they'll. I want. Uh, and these are gonna minus. So I get two more. Attack and loot. It's only when they deal combat damage to me, right? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I'm going to prevent this looting okay. nonsense. All right, and then I'll play a two mana. Comes in with a counter. I mean, that's probably just worse than casting Jace, whatever. Play another Jace. Sure. And then, this is bananas. <laughs> B-A-N-A-N-A, yes. Your turn. Gaunty. All right, which of my four really bad ones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, two of them are lands. One of them is Mox Amber, and the other one is a card. <laughs> All right. So let's take that one. Sure. Is it free? Oh, you uh, could it, play it. Mox Amber would actually give you uh, Arch of Areska right now. You can go. Okay. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I get Archer right now. <laughs> All right, I will take uh, the city's blessing to go along with my bajillion planeswalkers. All right, so the ones have to go up to two. So we'll just go ahead and tick those up to two. Uh, and now I have to think about these. Um, I just want to tick them all up. I don't know. Maybe I could just make three more creatures, I guess. Or whatever. <laughs> I just want to kill you. All right, we're officially out of Illusions Tokens next turn. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to attack because he just gets to eat one, so we'll just pass turn. That's pretty cool. Uh oh. Is it kill all target players' planeswalkers? I will lay bare the heart and get the card out of your hand. Is this any? Oh, non legendary. Okay, sure. I will attack one of the Jaces on two. Kill two of them. Yeah, they go. It says three counters on it now. So now it costs 10. Then I will play Bontu's Last Reckoning. Wait, hold on. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, you were still one short. I was just making sure you were not short. Okay. And then I'll cast a flying creature. Sure. That's pretty good. You can go. I'll draw a card with Arch. Yep. I'll draw for turn. Todd bricks off there. <laughs> Apparently he didn't. All right. Up, 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 up. You can't kill him, any of them. Ha-ha. Go. <laughs> okay. I do not untap my lands. Correct. Tempest Jen is currently a 5-4 flyer. Throne of the God Pharaoh says, at the beginning of your instep, each opponent loses like equal to the number of tapped creatures you control. Okay. Attack this Jace target here with the trigger. Okay. One Jace down. One out of, what, six? Um, well, now six, eight. Pass the turn. <laughs> oh, lordy. This is where Todd just like draws a vehicle so he can immediately tap all his illusions. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be tight. Um just draw a boat. I can't kill my thing. One, one, one. Whatever. I make five five illusions. That's a lot of illusions. Yeah. I don't know how many sweepers I have left. Yeah, I don't either. I don't think there's that many in black. And then one. I'll hit you for five. And then uh you or attack for five. I go to 11. I'm going to play a Kite Cell Courser. It cannot block a flyer, but it can gain flying when it attacks. Yeah, and then I take one from the throne. Yes. I go so to 10. 10. Does it drain? No, just lose no, life. No, just lose life. Yeah, that one's not so good. Yes! We did it! <laughs> okay. Cycle Desert of the Glorified. All right, deal. Ooh, City's blessing. blessing. Nice. Um. 
Okay. What you got there, Chief? You gonna kill one of my planeswalkers? Draw a card. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, is that better than? Yeah. If I just cast this, that just deals with one illusion. I block the gin. I still take ten plus yeah, a million. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I have a grasping dunes and a doom fall. Yeah. All right. Those are not good enough. Okay, we are here for game two. Uh, I'm on the play. I have a nice mix of stuff. I am going to be more cognizant this game of making sure I develop my side of the battlefield so Jace doesn't so easily run away with the game. Uh, but there's only so much <laughs> this deck can do about that. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good last game. <laughs> Made a lot of Jaces. Uh, my side, our hand is uh, pretty decent curve-wise. Uh, we really need to draw third land, though. So Okay, well, let's see what your hand no. is. Well, that's just not that bad. You want to you take a Trexos? <laughs> we got a reader. Yeah. 7-7. Seven, seven. I, whenever I play an historic spell, I can untap it, but I can just cast my general. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. It's a pretty sweet card in this format. Um, I feel like more decks should just be playing it. Especially if you have a cheap one. Like, imagine Traxus and Mono Red. Like, there's a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. All you do, you know, next turn you either cast your Porphyros or your Karizev. Smush them. You want so, this. Uh, Get this. My hand doesn't deal with the bigger creatures very well right now, but it, I think... It might be, I guess I have Gaunti to deal with Traxos. So that's fine. Still take four damage, though. Um, yeah, sure. So that's fine. I kind of want to take one of the cheaper creatures here so Todd doesn't have an, uh, an easy time holding counter spells. No, that's smart. I mean, half the so point I, of this I, deck yeah, is. I'll just take the Artificer's Assistant. Getting onto the battlefield in the first few turns and then using counter spells to punish your opponent. All right, uh, go. Excellent. Successfully poked a hole in Todd's curve. I don't have so go. many one-mana blue creatures that I can play. All right, now we're going to play a River Snake. I will Bane Whip Punisher that River Aww. Snake. Aw. So I could play Jason Tick Down and make a blocker. I don't hate that. Because if the Jace dies, it just costs five, which is not that big of a difference. Still works on curve with Traxos. But I think I just want to play this. And then if he doesn't kill it, I can just start smooshing him and hold up counter spells. Fable Punisher seems pretty sweet. Gaunt. All right. Top four. Which two mana, two power flyer would you like? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Is it just a bunch of two mana, two power flyers? That would be great. <laughs> Called it. I'm going to take this one. All right. I don't care if they're randomized or not. Okay. You can go. All right. Well, he has four power versus my five. I'm going to smush for four. 16. Yep. And I'm going to play Traxos because, you know. Why not? He big. He big! Okay. No! No! I will battle at the bridge of the Tempest Gen for four. Ooh, you gain four life too, right? Yeah, I go That's to 20. That's a big swing. Okay. And I'll attack with this and leave back the Gaunti for this Traxos. Right. 18. You're at 18. Yeah. You can go. Traxos, don't untap. Now, I would like a sixth land. I uh, will play a Zalfirin Void. I'll scar one. Man, this would have been a good tar card to draw last game. I think I just want the sixth mana source. So I'll play this, uh, trigger this. Yep. And I think I actually want to tick down. I have enough mana to um, recast Jace next turn if I need to. And I just want to get a little pressure because I don't want to tack into that right now. So your turn. Okay. I will cast the Immortal Sun. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I'm so sorry I drew the spell pierce. Get out of here! Get out of here with your Jace Hoser! Sun! You can go. 
All right, I will play Arch. I will play Zahid, which will give me this, whatever the Star City's Blessing is. We don't have the Star City's Blessing just yet. We just have the normal City's Blessings, but uh, we'll take up Jace. I think I want to attack for seven. He's 100% going to trade, but I still get to loot. All right. I guess he could just recast the, the Gaunti. The problem is I don't have a lot of ways to, like, make this unblockable, for example. Uh, so, like, this is basically always going to be able to trade with this. The question is, if I trade, is he going to just recast the next turn? And if the answer is yes, and he doesn't have a better play, uh, huh, whatever. Uh, if you don't have a better play, I think I'm fine with that. So we'll smush for seven. Uh, yeah, I think I have to block. All right, so you're going to take four down to 16. Yep. I'm going to get a loot off of the Jace since I have trample damage. And I will discard Chart of Course, I guess. Your turn. Since we have Arch of Raska, I think I want to keep this other card since we have ways to generate card advantage. This, of course, being the Gaunti card still. Yes. Uh, Gaunti's in the command zone with a yeah. counter. Uh, wait, was I wrong? Was I short? Hold on. Short on what? Six, nine, ten. No, I was, I was right. I thought I, I prematurely got a the city's blessing. The city's blessing, but I sure. I, sorry, I just want to make sure I didn't screw that up. Um, hmm. you have two cards in hand, mm -hmm. and one of them is cancel. Mm hmm. I was going to say, wait, how did you know that? Did you just trick me? <laughs> I forgot you played a discard spell on turn one. This is going to be a tough one, but I think I want to get this one down. This would have been good last game. Oh, man. So read it off for the people. When, Let's get it okay. on, the, on the thing. Demon of Dark Schemes. This one hasn't been around too much lately. Yeah. Uh, five five flyer. When it enters the battlefield, all other creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn. Whenever another creature dies, I get an energy, and I can pay two in a black and four energy to return a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under my control, tapped. So, so these two die, and you get two energy. Yeah, and it costs four energy. Yes. To get okay. Um, Jake Bow Wow. That's my Jake. Probably there. Okay. It is. There we go. All right. There's Jake. All right. He's a 5-5, five, five. Uh, and so it's just my two for now. Whenever any creature dies, or another creature dies, yeah. you get an energy. So if two more creatures die, he's able to return something like Traxxas, or I guess Tempest Gen wouldn't be that problematic. Yeah. So. No, normally there, you would you might want to take the free attack with Bane Punisher, so like at Jace, but if I make that attack, I, then I, if I, I think it's know, likely I Todd trades. Or trade. Yeah, but like you probably sniff something out that maybe your Zahid's going to die, and you probably just trade the 2-2. Two -two, well, Zahid's, then... I mean, I, yeah, yeah. so I, I think it's just all worse. Yeah, right? and then I don't I get the 2 energy. Right. So I think it, that's a spot where it's actually better. Okay. Um, I don't really care if my Jace dies. I kind of just want to make a 2-2, two -two, but I kind of oh. don't want to put another creature on the battlefield. Oh, I play. I should have done something different last turn. I could have, if near Deadlands, this, and then sack the Punisher to kill the Zahid. Ooh. Missed that line. Yeah, but then I would have been able to cancel this. And that's, like, one of your best cards. I mean, I got I got a bunch of good cards in my hand. All right, thank you for five. Actually, I'm going to hold on to this land. I am at 11. All right, I'm going to loot. Yep. Uh, just cut land. Go. I will kill the Jace. Um, I will pass the turn. So I can draw a card, or I can just hold up cancel for his removal spell for Zahid. I think I will hold up cancel. Uh, if you're going to your turn on your upkeep, I am going to feel the ruin your arch. Yeah, maybe I should have just gambled. Oh, well. All right, we're all in on it. Whatever. Zahid for president. I could have drawn a card. He would have killed it in response if he doesn't have a removal spell. But I just kind of had a feeling he had a removal spell. All right. Uh, 
Jace, I will tick up for an attack. Uh, I will go to six. Loot. Yep. Go. Basically, I don't want to put a creature on the battlefield that Deadlands can kill. Easiest way for me to lose this game is for him to be able to turn this on. I will attack your Jace. Might have been a mistake to cast Jace that turn. Cancel it. For that I will play a Liliana. Yeah. I will rebuff your cancel. Ooh, okay. Uh, so now my Liliana can... Take up to six. Take up to six. Make a zombie and mill two. Mm -hmm. And now I can go to one and then semi-stabilize the battlefield with the Deadlands. I took a risk blowing up the... Am I just dying to Dowsing Dagger? <laughs> I didn't have very many ways in my deck to kill you this turn. That's <laughs> certainly one of them. Whack you for seven. That he is. That he is. I took a risk there with my life total because I wanted to stop your card draw engine. Oh, yeah, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. I, Here you go, buddy. I had cheap creatures covered. Are you just in disbelief right now? Is that what's happening? I'm just sad. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, trigger on the stack. Let's... Oh, yeah. Okay. Raskus is in off the top. Look, yes, you would have won, but then we still would have went to game three. So, I got to say, both those games were pretty sweet. I, game two was very close. Uh, yeah. I, I thought that could have gone either way. Uh, there was a few turns where I could have like drawn a card with... Arch of Raska and gambled a little bit versus a uh, removal spell. I, I guess because you didn't um, cast the card you got off of Gonti the first time, I probably could have assumed that it was either one of two things. Uh, it, it probably wasn't a creature because most of my creatures are really cheap. Uh, so that leaves it with like, you know, maybe a few pieces of equipment. Uh, maybe my, the Gonti was four lands, but that's really unlikely. And the other one being just any counter spell. And I could have maybe tried to play around that. But um, got to a point in the game where I was basically in top deck mode. Like I thought you played that game really well. Uh, you know, it, it, the only instance maybe just you could have killed my uh, Zaid pretty or much more quickly. With the, if I, so if I kill it with the Banewell Punisher and the Deadlands, mm -hmm. I go down to five mana, and your cancel definitely lands. Like next turn, I would have just played one of my things. If I drew a land, probably Demon. Maybe I'd wait on Demon, but or like uh i'd probably I, i'd have to play one of my choice into your cancel and mm -hmm. then i still have my land to deal with your arch maybe you, you probably draw an extra card off of it somewhere yeah and we're sort of we're kind of evenish on um resources but my deck is a lot better in that scenario sure my cards are more powerful on average sure but i i think um for me the breaking point was that you would not have had a way to pressure jace cunning cast away yeah. And I think at that stage, without your Demon of Dark Schemes, like, no matter how you kill it, if it's not a creature, I can just keep casting it. Because I have enough mana to, to cast it over and over again. Yeah. Like, you killed it, uh, you know, and I have to cast it for five the next turn. And then you kill it again, and I could have still cast it for seven. But I chose to kill you with Dowsing Dagger instead. Good choice. Yeah, it was a good yeah. choice. Um, I, I thought that game one was really sweet. I've never had that many Planeswalkers in play before, let alone all of the same one. So that was cool. But uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Gonti is really powerful. I I like the um, the the massive amounts of removal the deck has, just because I think Brawl is gonna be more creature heavy, just because there are way better creatures than there are non creature spells. Yeah, I think playing against a bunch of counter spells with a Jace Commander is gonna be tough for a deck like this because you don't have a, many ways to get onto the battlefield and make sure you have pressure. You re almost always have to answer them directly, mm -hmm. and there's like a lot of discard spells. Uh, this card's fine against counter magic. Uh, maybe I got a little too loose there with my life total, but I kind of like the way I played that game. I, I liked like, it too. I mean, yeah. I only have a few ways to kill you from that spot. Dowsing Dagger was just right on top of the yeah. deck. I think Gonti is definitely um, one of the better choices. I, I like just being monocolored. I don't, one of the issues I've had with Brawl is the mana bases aren't very good. Mm -hmm. So I like sticking with single color generals. Oh, same. And I, I really like the the specialty lands you can play when you're playing monocolor like arch of Raska okay. basically goes in every deck field of ruin field of ruin uh zalfir and void's very good like, yep. i think that card's great and as long as you don't have very strict mana requirements like 
you could, for example, be playing Dreadshade if you want to. So maybe if you do that, you don't play so many of the uh, the specialty colorless lands. Yeah. But at the same time, you still get to play uh, Desert of the Glorified, I think it's the black one, the one that cycles. Yep. Uh, you still get to play uh, If Near Deadlands and maybe a few other deserts to get more value out of Deadlands. So it's pretty, pretty sweet. Monocolor decks, I think... Uh, are pretty cool in, in Brawl just because of how little mana fixing you actually have. Uh, if you are going to play multicolor deck, I think I recommend playing green just because green has ways yeah. to fetch up the other colors. Uh, I don't know what green generals there are that are multicolor. Zakama. I guess you could also play Go upstairs. green red, play Rada, the Warlord Rada. I like I like Rada, but I like Sakama a lot. Yeah, Sakama's tight. Just you nine mana. Colors. Yeah. Yeah, and you cast it and then you just get untap. Yeah, all your lands and kill all their stuff. Basically free. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> Game anyway, over. So I'm Todd Anderson. That's Ross Merriam. This was Brawl on the Versus series. Tomorrow we standard. have Standard. Uh, if you're a fan of Standard, which I hope you will be soon, when hopefully they ban Goblin Chain Whirler. I don't expect anybody to be a fan of Standard right now. <laughs> you know, the maniacs who just really like playing Black Red Mirrors and Mono Red versus Mono Red. Sure. Yeah. But uh, the Patrick Sullivans of the world. I don't know what to tell you. We're playing two non-Goblin Chain Whirler decks, I think. I'm not playing Chain Whirler. You're not playing Chain Whirler. Brad built all my decks. I stepped in for him this week. Do I have Goblin Chain Whirler in my deck? I'm going to ask the director. I know the guys in the Commander Versus yep. talk, talk to uh, Kyle West a bunch. So no Goblin Chain Whirlers tomorrow. So if you're a fan of Standard without Goblin Chain Whirler, stick around. See you tomorrow.